What is up, everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning. Happy Sunday. Where did the weekend go is the question of the day. It is July 31st. We are coming in hot on August. As most of you know, yesterday I got invited to an event, which was actually pretty cool. It was the Beer Olympics. I was Team Japan. I didn't know anyone there. I went with my friend Ellen. It was actually a really good time. We came in seventh, I think, out of like 20 or 25 teams. I'm not too happy about it. There was two events that gave out max points that we finished mid-pack. We also tied two events, and then we won two. And we lost one. We won two, one, and two. I mean, listen, I'll take it. It was a great time. Then came home, took a little nap, watched the UFC pay-per-view, and now here I am on a Sunday morning. Already went to the park with my dog. He had a nice walk. Just got myself some breakfast, drinking some coffee, and now we're making an XRP video. Folks, in this video, as you can probably already tell by the thumbnail, what we are about to talk about, a new asset class backed digital economy yes you heard that correctly i'm going to show it to you we're going to go over it because at the end of the day i truly do believe that everything we're talking all of the money is going to run through the xrp ledger how about more sec corruption exposed those new documents new details have been driven up and then what happened last night or yesterday day with the price of XRP, folks? It got one of those nice fat green candles that sent it all the way up to 40 cents. It was looking to break out of 41. You know where I sit currently with XRP. We got to break 38, which we did. We need to stay above 38 cents for at least another day. And then I think all signs are pointing to a nice rebound up to that 50 cent mark. Now, let's head over to Live Coin Watch. Live Coin Watch, blah. Like we always do. What do we see in Bitcoin? $23,769. It's currently down 3.33% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum coming in about 1700 It's down 1.17%. XRP is coming in at a mean lean 39 cents. It is still in the green over the past 24 hours, leading all the top cryptos as it's up 3.37%. What we want to see, we want to see this thing push back up a little bit higher. Let's hold this 38 cent zone. We don't want to see it dip back down. It is getting very close. We want to see some new money come in. We want to get through the weekends. We want to get through Monday. Let's go Tuesday. Let's get some new money coming into this market and let's push even higher. That's what I want to see. But we are seeing the stable coins either at a dollar or under the dollar peg, which, you know, kind of makes me nervous. But. Time will tell what happens from here. The Bitcoin dominance remains in that same range. 40.44% is the total crypto mark currency mark cap. It's coming at 1.12 trillion. Now I'll bring you over to the shop before we get going. Not too many left of these in stock. It's a three pack. You pick and choose your colors. You get a lid, a straw, a cleaning brush, free shipping in the US. Take, check it out. Get yourself some merch. Then Erad Crypto puts this out. XRP weekly mag update. There's a bullish cross on the weekly MAC. This is bullish, and August will be a bullish month until this becomes invalidated. Here it is. You can see the cross is on the way. You can see we got the nice little green nub, little green candle popping up there. Folks, I'm telling you, hold 38. I think we're going to see some good things for XRP and a nice push up. We'd love to start talking about a 50 cent XRP again, then the 75 cents, and then let's break that psychological barrier that comes around that dollar mark. And then Weezy put this out. For reference, there are now as many people who have signed up for the Johnny Deaton against the SEC case as there were at the 1985 Queen Live concert. Look at this. That's how many people, folks. We are filling, selling out, standing room only in an arena. And the SEC is not acknowledging what is going on. Don't you think there are bigger issues here? If you have this many people attacking or going after or are unhappy with the same company who's supposed to be protecting them. And look at this. There's a petition going around to fire Gary. Almost 13,000 people have signed this. I'm telling you, Gensler is not going to last much longer. He didn't even want to show up to Congress because he knew what was coming. Something fishy's going on with this man, folks. He goes from one of the smartest guys, very knowledgeable about crypto, blockchain, DLT, when he's teaching MIT classes, he gets into the SAC, SEC, and he acts like he doesn't really know much. You can tell he's reading a script. Full-time script readers like, is what we like to call those types of people. And from Coindesk, Michael Saylor, he states, 
that he questions Ethereum's protocol and technical reliability and security as well as his ethical soundness. Looks like Sal is taking the old, uh, I don't like Ethereum. You shouldn't like it either. You should follow me and put all your money into Bitcoin approach. Interesting. I'm telling you, we're starting to see a lot of weird vibes within the Bitcoin and Ethereum camps where they are starting to switch out and change narratives. Look, look what that guy did. That Twitter, Twitter guy, the, from, I believe he's from Masari. Fudded Ripple, Fudded XRP, told everyone XRP is going to die. It's going to 10 cents, blah, blah, blah. We know what happened and everyone went to 10 cents. It actually ran up to $2. And now, all of a sudden, he's flipping the script and he wants to get on stage and talk with Brad Gallinghouse about what's actually going on out there. Interesting times, times ahead. And Steven Huber says, The Office of the Government Ethics sent directions to all ethics department that hold and trade in crypto that it must be disclosed except when the SC declares a crypto asset a commodity through a public statement. What what's what lucky that? Four days earlier, him and dead that for Ethereum, and here it is. So pretty much, I'm not going to read this to you, you, you pretty much get the gist, but I'm going to tell you what's happening here. The Office of Government Ethics said, listen, they told all the departments within the agency, if you are holding a trade in crypto, you need to disclose it. The only way you don't need to disclose it is if there's a public statement given where we say that it's not a security, that it's a commodity. And then what happened? Four days before that came out, it's a famous Hinman speech. We talked about Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's just, just, it's just just perfect timing. Do they just have the best timing in the world? That's what I want to know. Ask yourself that question. Do they really just have the best timing in the world here? And then Stephen Ewing then goes and he puts this out. Oh, that's why the Department of Justice dropped its investigation of the, of the SEC over the Ethereum free pass. There you go, Michelle Corver. Stop working at FinCEN. Starting a new, corp, uh, new job at Anderson Horowitz. She was head of regulatory, regulatory crypto for Anderson Horowitz. She was a chief digital currency advisor for the Department of Treasury. It all makes sense why they stopped looking into him because these people left to go work for them. It's like everyone knew what was about to happen. And that's what we call insider trading. And that's what gets people locked up and sent to jail. And I think when this is all said and done, we're going to see some people getting the old clink clank. Johnny Dean says this, let's make something crystal clear about the hidden speech and ethics surrounding it. I asked a very specific question. The very specific question goes to the ex Warren Davison. Is it, or Warren Davison asks, is it true that director Hemmen submitted the speech to ethics? The SEC's director, the guy who subbed in for Clayton, stated, we can't answer that question because of the ongoing litigation in the Ripple versus, uh, Ripple and XRP case. He says, what's going to be litigated regarding the speech with the 58 drafts along with people's comments attached to the emails must be turned over to Ripple or withdrawn to drafts. Comments and emails are privileged. Whether him and had his speech screened by the ethics committee is not being litigated. Whether he had it approved by ethics or not is not an issue in this case. In fact, it's irrelevant to any issue being litigated. Whether the speech was approved by ethics doesn't matter one way or the other. It has nothing to do with whether XRP is or isn't a security. It is irrelevant to whether Ripple has fair notice on the, on the law, whether the speech was approved by ethics in an internal matter. In other words... The SEC director could have easily answered Congress Davison's question exactly. And guess what he didn't do? Answer Congress Davison's question. Now we got Ripple's manager, director, Sandy Young, talks about XRP and its performance as a bridge currency. Listen to this. How important is it that XRP um, stays one of the top tokens for this to work? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, again, I would say we're not, you know, really so much focused on the particular sort of price of XRP or the volatility or any other coin particularly. That so, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it has a higher or lower market cap. So if we look at our again on the on demand liquidity solution RippleNet where we are using XRP as a bridge currency, right, to move fiat, you know, around the world, right? Um that is, you know, regardless of the price of so XRP. All that matters is how many there are. Doesn't matter what the price is. 
it's it's yeah it's a bridge that we are using as a bridge so um it's not you know we're not here really to honestly like speculate and and um it's you know it's a means to enhance a means to bring that efficiency to the market so um and again i mean when these things happen we see like prices drop etc for me what's interesting is when i talk to one of our customers partners and the benefits they see right a you know the customer as most of you know great examples of one of the big remittance companies name when they can enable their payments a i don't know filipino worker paying you know from the uk sending money to their family to pay for food or housing or hospital or whatever it is and they can do that at a fraction of the cost um yeah. you know at at that for me is is you know where the big value is um as opposed to you know how much society is in circulation or not and you know yeah. i mean well good <laughs> <laughs> Those, those are pretty big statements coming from Sandy in regards to the performance and the price of XRP. But I want to bring you over because when we look at XRP and what it's going to be used for, especially treasury management, which is a big thing that's coming up, and how XRP is being positioned, how they are they are comparing it to Bitcoin, but they're not comparing it to Bitcoin, if that makes sense. They're trying to say, you know, Bitcoin, slow, takes a while, but XRP kind of acts more like a stable coin, right? And you just heard that the price really doesn't matter because it moves so quick. And it's used, the, the role it's in is just a bridge. You send dollar, bridges through XRP, comes out in the end. That's the role of it. But when we look and we go back to this Everest document, and we can see the, the study that was done by Everest, and they talk about the bank the, the bank's adoption of real-time settlement and DLT back in 2017. We are starting to see all of this come together. When we look at this, we are talking about all the money in the world here. We're talking about all the large players, China, Japan, Australia, uh, the UK, the US, obviously, right? All coming in with everything running through the Interledger protocol and all settling or using XRP as a settlement asset. Then you see the different platforms that get involved. But it gets even bigger than that because when we looked at this NASCOM technology and leadership form back in 2019, right? They talked about how these pilots have gone into production environments. And what they're talking about here is effectively letting users transfers to Great British Pound, to Euro, and any bank in the EU, a GBT to USD to any bank in the US. Why is that so significant? Well, what did we just find out just a couple of days ago on Tuesday the 26th that Singapore's FOMO Pay partnered with Ripple for XRP-based treasury payments. Treasury is the key word here because MoneyGram is the first to test out XRP for the back end for treasury. But why is it so big? Because FOMO is gonna leverage XRP for obviously quick, fast border settlement transactions for the Euro and USD transactions. The same thing that we found out back in 2018 that was you know using their pilots, but now they went into production. And now we are seeing this hit main scale. The folks, this is big. These are two massive corridors and XRP is starting to get used. It's just going to ramp up. I'm going to leave it right there. Enjoy your Sunday. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.